فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم سبح لله ما في السماوات والارض وهو العزيز الحكيم له ملك السماوات والارض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير هو الاول والاخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي now we are at the most important part of quran as i feel for the muslim ummah of today the muslim ummah in decay and degradation for them these ten surahs are the most important part of the quran this is the biggest group of the madani surahs as regards the number ten madani surahs at one place سورة الحديد سورة المجادلة سورة الحشف سورة الممتحنة سورة الصف سورة الجمع سورة المنافقون سورة التغابن سورة الطلاق سورة التحريم 10 all do all these ten go to make nearly one and a quarter of the parts of quran in the beginning we have four al baqara al imran and nisal baida but regarding the volume they cover more than six parts of the quran but regarding the number of the surahs this is the biggest group the biggest flower pot of the badri surahs in the quran there are certain features which are common to these ten surahs number 1 nearly ha- all of them except one only and that is surah al-hashr all the nine surahs were revealed in the later half period of the stay of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in madina madani period 10 years divide them into 2 5 plus 5 so all these surahs except surah al-hashr they were revealed in the later 5 years period number 2 there is not neither any address nor even reference to the mushrikeen of arabia in these surahs the idolaters idol worships the associators the pagan people of arabian peninsula no reference all the address is to the muslims only there are references to the people of the book as a sign as a warning o muslims now you occupy that position in this world which was occupied by the former muslim ummah the bani israil for 2000 long years but then they were removed from this position why these were the weaknesses which came in them and the same are showing their faces in you also although they are very in a very primitive stage but all those weaknesses are showing up so be aware try to rectify the conditions that is why in this surah we find that addressing the muslims a sort of rebuke a sort of you know saying you are not doing this why you are not doing this this type you will find very commonly then the main subjects of the quran 
which are detailed, which are discussed in detail in the Makki Suras and the long Madani Suras. In these Suras we have summaries of those subjects. Small. Iman, Iman is the main subject of the Makki Suras. But here Surat ut 18 Ayat, a complete summary. Nifaq is one of the main subjects of the Madani Suras. Surat Nisa, Surat ut Tawbah, Surat ul Azab, Surat Muhammad. But here you have one Surah of 11 Ayat, Surat ul Munafiqun, most comprehensive regarding what are the reasons of this disease, etiology, as they call it in medical terminology, what are the symptoms, what is the prognosis, what is the preventive steps that can be taken, and what is the treatment. All these subjects in one surah of 11 ayat. Then the purpose of the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, described at many places. But the most comprehensive is Surah Al-Saf, included in this collection. In this way, the summaries of all the important subjects of Quran, the main themes of Quran, you will find in this one part, as volume is one part, one and a quarter. So to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to cater to the need of those people also who don't work very hard. So they need summaries, you know, just like some students, they need some khulasas and you know, summaries and so on to get through the examinations. So even if these ten surahs we can understand, I think it will suffice. Now, five of these surahs start with Sabbaha lillah or Yusabbihu lillah with the mention of the fact that everything in this universe is glorifying Allah. They are called Al-Musabbihat and they have a special importance in this group. Five Al-Musabbihat, Surah Al-Hadith, Surah Al-Hashr, Surah Al-Saf, Surah Al-Jum'ah, Surah Al-Ta'abun. The rest five start directly. And the first surah, that is Surah Al-Hadid, which we shall, we shall shortly be reading, is so to say, the Ummul Musabbihat, the subject matter of all the Musabbihat, in a nutshell, that is in Surah Al-Hadid. So I can't give you what I feel actually in my heart the importance, the grandeur, the majesty of this surah, Surah Al-Hadid. I don't have words to express myself. And I feel I am very lucky even. At a very early age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produced in my heart a special liking for this surah. So much so that Sometimes I dare say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this surah. That is, He has given me a very deep insight into this surah, a deep understanding of this surah, al mubarakah Now we start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sabbaha lillahi maafis samawati wal Everything that is in the heavens and the earth glorifies Allah. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And He is the mighty, all-powerful and the wise, having all the wisdom. What's the meaning of tasbih? Sabaha yasbahu means to float. Floating in water, 
keeping at the surface, not going down. Floating in the space, keeping its level. Kullun fi falaki yasbahun. Sabbaha yusabbiru means to keep something afloat. Not let it go down. To keep Allah afloat, what does it mean? Don't attach any concept with Him which is not becoming for Him. Any weakness? No. Any shortcoming? No. Any need? No. This affirmation of this fact. He is above all defects, above all weaknesses, above all shortcomings, above all mistakes. When you affirm this, this is tasbih. And when you say, he has all the good things in him, that is, hamd or tahmeed. Tasbih, tahmeed. Tasbih is a negative concept. He is above all these shortcomings and weaknesses, mistakes, nothing. But he has all the high attributes at the highest level. This is hamd. Yusabbihuna bihamdihi. At many places we have read, especially in Surah Bani Israel, وَإِمْ مِنْ شَيْنِ اللَّهِ يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَاكِ اللَّهِ تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُمْ There is not a single thing in the whole universe which is not glorifying Allah with praise. But you can't understand their glorification. But one way we can understand, what is it? This universe is glorifying Allah by its presence. See to me, is there any defect in me? No. So who is free from the defect? The one who created me. I have nothing. A painter has painted something. If it is very beautiful, praise goes to whom? To the painting or the painter? So this is the work of Allah, this universe. And by its very Existence, everything is testifying that my creator, my planner, my fashioner is above all weaknesses, complete in all respect. This is the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which everything is doing. Then there can be, Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a tongue to everything of its own. As we have read in Surah Hamim Saita, Antakallahu ladhi antakakulla shay. Our skins will say that now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us speak also, as He has made everything speak. So maybe they have some their own tongues and they glorify also, which we can't understand. But that aspect is understandable. Secondly, please note in this group of surahs, these two names of Allah, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim, they are repeated, mostly repeated, mostly repeated. Why? They go to give you a complete concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the sovereign of this universe. The sovereign must have total authority. No limits or boundaries on its authority. And number two, we know in this world that wherever there is some authority, there is a tendency to corruption. Authority tends to corrupt. And absolute authority corrupts absolutely. But here, Allah has all the authority. But at the same time, He has all the wisdom. So his authority is used with wisdom. This is the balancing factor for the total authority. No outside limitations, no checks and balances from outside. But his own wisdom keeps his authority on the correct line. And this is the concept, the political concept.
العزيز الحكيم له ملك السماوات والارض تو ہم بلونگز دس سوورنٹی ناؤ نوٹ دس ورلڈ دی کانسیپٹ آف اسلام ایز اے دین ایز اے ٹوٹل سسٹم آف لائف اینڈ دی ہائیسٹ مینیفیسٹیشن آف دیٹ از دی کانسیپٹ آف اسٹیٹ all this social structure you know it has evolved and then the highest evolved form of the organized society is the state lahu mulk islam islam is a state it wants to establish a state of its own it doesn't want to live underneath any other sovereignty oh no no al haqq yalu wa la yuna alay The truth has the right to dominate, not to be dominated. The whole world is subject to Allah. To Him belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. You are here, you meet. He keeps you alive. He gives you life, and He makes you die. The whole Allah will shine clear, and He is powerful over everything. Everything. Who will love Allah? Who will ask Him? Who will ask Him? Who will ask Him? He is the first and the last and the most manifest and the most hidden. These are four names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this is the only place in the whole of Quran where you find this vow between the names. Nowhere other, nowhere in the Quran, nowhere else. Even eight names are mentioned in Surah Al-Hashr. الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر نو واو ان بتوين نو اند واي بيكوز اول ذيز اتريبيوتس اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى ار بريزنت ان هيز بيرسون سايمولتانيوسلي بت هير ذيس از ذا اونلي بليس اوله والاخره والظاهره والباطن واي Because awal and akhir can't exist simultaneously. There must be a time gap. Awal, akhir, some gap. When there was nothing, he was there. And there will be nothing, and he will be there. So he is the awal of the creation, and he will be the last of the creation. Creation was not there; he was there. So this creation will not be there; he will be there. So he is the beginning and the end of this creation. And between this beginning and end, this universe, this universe has two aspects: inner aspect, outer aspect. And for, uh, from from the angle of the outer aspect, he is the most manifest. And from the inner aspect, he is the most hidden. Nobody can know him. But he's everywhere. Nahn wa akramu ilayhi bin hamlil warid. We read in Surah Qaf. He's so manifest. All this creation is a manifestation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Everything is a sign of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He is so evident, so manifest, but he is absolutely hidden. Nobody can know him. Know his person. We know him only through his attributes, his sifat, his names, not his person. Wahu abe kulli shayin alim, and he knows everything. Now note these two attributes are most important. Huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Huwa abe kulli shayin alim. Power over everything, knowledge of everything. Omnipotent, omniscient. Out of the attributes of Allah, they are the most fundamental attributes. Who are the Khalq of Samawat and Allah? The Fisit of the Yam. It is He who created the heavens and the earth in six days or six cycles of time or six periods of time. So Mustafa Al Arsh, then He mounted on the throne of power and glory. Yalla mu maayal e dufil lard. He knows whatever enters the earth. Each drop of rain entering, he knows it. Yalla mu ma 
Mama Yahro Yumina, whatever comes out of it, he knows. Mama Yanzuru Mina Sama, whatever is coming down from the heaven, he knows. Mama Yaru Jofiha, whatever is going up into the heaven, he knows. The angels going up. Vahua Makum Maina Makuntu. He is with you wherever you are. We can't imagine how. And we shouldn't try to understand it how. The how we should keep separate. But he is. That is must. Wherever you are, he is with you. Now these philosophical questions, you know, led to the discussions. We might have heard these things. Vahdatul Shahood and Vahdatul Wujud. Very highly technical discourses, scholastic discussions. I don't want to even refer to these things. But this is the most important place of Quran regarding this. I have an Urdu dars of Surat al Hadid comprising 15 hours, 29 ayat, 15 hours. But those who feel interested, they can listen to it. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. When he is with you wherever you are, so he is seeing for himself everything you, you are doing. When he is with you wherever you are, so he is the direct witness. Lahu mulku samawati wal Now note, why repeating this again? This is the most important concept. To him belongs the sovereignty of the universe and the earth. When people is make Islam a religion in the usual sense of the word, this concept of sovereignty of Allah goes off. Pray and fast and this and that and then and Hajj and Umrah, that's all. Deen is complete. And all the matters will be made to return to him. He merges the night into the day. He merges the day into the night. And he knows whatever is in the hearts and chests of the people. These six ayats, let me say, I again have to admit that I don't have words to express what impression I have in my heart at what highest level of consciousness and philosophical discourse this person and attributes of Allah has been discussed in these six ayat. And this is regarding this, the person and the attributes of Allah. This is the most important, most important, most important ayat, sixth ayat of Surah Al-Hadith. Now this is as it is. Allah is there. Universe belongs to Him. He is the Creator. He is the <coughs> Sovereign. What should you do? What does He demand from you? Aminu billahi wa Number one, have belief in Allah and His Messenger. وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا جَعَلَكُمْ مُسْتَخْلَفِينَ فِيهِ And expend from whatsoever He has given you wise regency over it for His pleasure. Whatever He has given you. He has given you this hand, use it for Allah. I am the wise student on my body. I'm Khalifa, Mustakhlafina fi. Allah has given me something. And He has given me, has made me much wise to it. I can use as like. But to keep its use for Allah, all the faculties that Allah has given me, all the capabilities that Allah has bestowed upon me, all the belongings that Allah has given me, expend them, expend them, expend them. Two words, Aminu al fiqu Aminu al fiqu Aminu al fiqu Note these two words. They will be repeated and repeated and repeated in all these ten surahs. 
Have belief as you should have belief. It should reach the level of conviction and expand in the way of Allah. فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَأَنفَقُوا This is two things repeated. So who amongst you believe and spend? لَهُمْ عَجْرُونَ كَبِيرٌ For them is a very great reward. And now is coming the rebuke, as I told you. وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُوْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ What has happened to you? You don't have faith in Allah. Who are being addressed? The companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Because the, among the companions, there were all types of people. The Muhajireen who had passed through hardships, sacrifices, all types of tests and tribulations. Then you know, Ashabiqul Nawaluna Min Al-Ansar, the early Ansars of Medina. But now every day, new people are coming and entering the fold of Islam. As we read, Qalat al Arabu Amanna, they also say, we, 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 we claim we are Mu'min. No, 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 you are not Mu'min, you are only Muslims. So what has happened? The average has decreased. Previously, the number of Muslims was small, but the intensity of Iman was great. So the average level was high. Now the number is great. But the intensity in the newcomers is not that much. So the average has gone down. And now we are living in an era when this average has reached nearly zero. Do we have Iman? This is the biggest misunderstanding. Very few, very few of the Muslims of today have Iman. They have a creed, a racial creed. They have a dogma, not the conviction, not the iman in the heart, deep rooted in the heart. No. Quran says, "Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu, antumul alona in kuntum mu'mini." If you are true mu'min, you will be the uppermost. And we are today the lower most. What's the logical result? We don't have Iman. But however, we have is a shadow of Iman. A legal shadow. And I say, I believe. Okay, then you are a Muslim. That's all. قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُوْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا This is the condition of 99.9 .9 recurrent percent Muslims today. وَمَالَكُمْ لَا تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولَ يَدْعُوكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِرَبِّكُمْ And the messenger of Allah is calling you. Still he is present amongst you. Calling you that you should believe in your Lord. وَقَدَ خَدَمْ إِسَاقَكُمْ And he had already taken and extracted a covenant from you in Kuntum Mu'mineen, if you are believers. The covenant that you made before coming in this world, Alastu bi Rabbikum. And the second covenant you made, when you said, I believe. This belief is a sale purchase agreement between Allah and you. In Allah ashtarabil al-mu'mineen al-fusam wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah. You are under these two covenants. Now, after this rebuke, a guidance to the remedy. If you really, if you peep down into your hearts and you find, yes, there is vacuum type of thing. I don't have that Iman. Then where to go to get this Iman? هو الذي ينزل على عبده آيات بينات ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور. It is he who is sending down on his bondsman, on his servant, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. These enlightened and illuminating آيات, revelations, 
لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ so that he brings you out مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُورِ from the darknesses into the light. You have the source material of Iman you have in your house, you have in your possession, and that is Quran. Only you have to read it, only you have to ponder over it, only you have to deep, dive deep into its meanings, that's all. You don't have to go to any caves or any woods or any far away from human society and everything, no, no, wherever you are. Take this book, ponder over it, read it, dive deep into its meanings. It will stir in you that dormant consciousness which is already present in you, but it is dormant, inactive. It will be activated. Verily Allah is for you very kind and very merciful. And the biggest manifestation of His mercy is Quran. Ar-Rahman u'allam al-Quran. The manifestation of Rahmaniyah of Allah is Quran. Now second, there were two demands, the Aminu and Al-Fiqu. This is very systematic. The first rebuke, why don't you have faith? Now the second rebuke. وَمَعَلَكُمْ أَلَّا تُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ What has happened to you? You don't want to spend in the way of Allah. You want to keep your money, your wealth? Why? What has happened to you? This is not Iman. This doesn't become of a true moment. If he believes in the hereafter, he must deposit everything in the bank of the hereafter. Why is he depositing here? From where he has to go anyhow. Whether this wealth remains with you or not, but you have to depart from here. And you are keeping it here. It means you don't have, you don't really believe in the hereafter. Whatever you spend for the cause of Allah is deposited in the divine bank of the hereafter. The final inheritance of everything, all the heavens and the earth, will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will all vanish. What will remain? For whom? Who will be the inheritor? Very important point. Both of you are not equal to the others who spent before the victory and fought in the way of Allah. Now you know this, just as you know, if there is a flower bud, the petals are there but they are not visible. When it opens, now the petals become visible. In the same way, in the beginning was anfiqu only. Aminu billahi wa rasulihi anfiqu. Nimma ja'alakum mustakhla fi nafi. Now we found anfiqu fi sabilillah. This infaq is for the cause of Allah. And now we found waqatalu. Qital is also infaq. Spending your life for Allah is qital. Infaq maal, infaq jaan. Bazl maal, bazl jaan. So when it is was said, anfiqu, mimar jalaku mustakhla fi nafi, potentially it contained in it the ketal also. Here it is opening. La yastavi bin kuman al faqa bin qabl al fad. Those of you who spent for the cause of Allah before victory, and also fought for the cause of Allah, they are not equal to others. Ulaika azamu darajatum. They are much in the ranks of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are very high. Then those min al-lazeen anfaqu bin ba'du wa qatalu who spent in the way of Allah but after the victory and they took part in the fighting in the cause of Allah but after the victory. When Muslims were weak, 
whosoever was striving for Islam at that time. And he has a very high position. Then, when Islam has become a power, now with the powerful, everybody wants to walk. So, the ranks are very different. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to all, very good. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir, whatever you are doing, Allah is aware of it. Manzal ladhi yukridu Allah qardal hasanan. Who is that courageous person who gives a goodly loan to Allah? Listen, Allah, to him belongs everything and he is demanding loan. What does it mean? It's an appreciation. You spend something for me and my deen, so it's a loan to me. But to give loan to Allah, for that you need courage. Why? For that you have to have the belief and conviction. Conviction in the existence of Allah, conviction in the resurrection, conviction in the hereafter. Then only you can extend a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not without these things. So, manzal lazi. This is a very challenging attitude, style. Kaun hota hai harife mai mard afghani ash ishq hai mukarrar mere hai mukarrar lave saki ka salah mere baad. Who is who is who? Manzal lazi yukridullah karzan hasanan. Faizai fa ulahu. So Allah will keep on doubling it many folds. Wallahu ajrul kareem. And in addition, there will be a very generous reward. Now, a scene is now being shown, the day of judgment. A certain stage is where people will have to cross, it seems, a bridge, which we call in Urdu, Pul Sirat. This As Siratul Mustaqeem Fid Dunya, in this world, then it becomes As Sirat in the other world. And you have to pass over it. Underneath is the hell. Those who were considered Muslims in this world, those who are kuffar, their cases have already been decided. Gone with the wind. But those who were counted as Muslims, now they have to be screened. Who among them had real faith and who was a hypocrite? For that, you will be made to pass through over a bridge where is absolute darkness. But those who, who had real Iman, they will have light, light of Iman in their hearts. So that torch will be showing them the, the passage. And because they have earned good deeds with the right, right hands, so there will be a light on the right side also. With this help, they will pass. But those who considered themselves Muslims, or they were considered Muslim by the others in this world, but they didn't have the real Iman, or real good deeds, they will have no light. So they will stagger and fall down. Yawma taral mu'minina wal mu'minat, the day when you will see the really believing Muslim men and really believing Muslim women. Nuruhum. Yasa Nuruhum. Their light will be running. Baina Adihim in front of them. Wabi Amanahim and to the right of them. Bushra Kumul Yama Jannat. It will be said to them, For you are the glad tidings today of the gardens, Tadri Mitatel and Har, underneath which Rivers are flowing. Khalidina fiha. And he will remain in those, these gardens forever, forever. Zalikahu al Fadul Azim. And this is the great success. But what about the Munafiqeen? Yawma yakulul Munafiqoona wal Munafiqato. On that day, the hypocrite men and women, they will say to the believers, Lil Lazina Aman Unzuruna, please wait for us. 
We don't have any light. Just imagine if you are crossing some jungle during the night and somebody has a torch and he is going, you know, you say, just wait for me also. I don't have a torch. I should avail the light of your torch in the same way. When the believing men and women will be going, because they have the light. They are seeing the path. Then this Munafiqun would say, Unzuruna naktabis bin nurekum. Wait for us so that we can also benefit and we borrow from your light. It will be said, Go back. This light was earned in that world, which is now past. Iman was earned over there. Good deeds were earned over there. This light has not been given here as a charity. It was earned in that world. If it is possible for you, go back to that world and try to earn. Kilar jeuvara kung fatka me surura. Try to get that light. Fazore babay na hum me lahu bab. In the meantime, a wall will be erected between the two. Baate na hum lahu bab. There will be a door also in that. Baate na hum fir rahma. In the inside of that wall will be the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The hospitality. For the people of Jannah will start. Vazahirahum in Kibalihi and the outside of it, before it, there will be the torment and the chastisement. Now they have been screened out of the Muslims. The really believing moments have passed and the hypocrites they remain back. They will call to them. Were we not with you? He says, God, there, we are here. Why? We were there in, this, in the world. We were also Muslims. We were praying before Muhammad Sallallahu in the mosque. Were we not? They will say, why not? They were with us. You were with us. وَلَاكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ But you gave up yourself to the temptations of that life. More money, more position, more fame. Over indulgence in these things. You put yourself into that fitna. Fatantum and fusakum. With your own hands, you put yourself in that fitna. Watarabastum. And then you started waiting what happens. Let us wait and see. To whom was the victory? To Muhammad and his companions? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu ta'ala anum? Or the enemies? Watarabastum. And then doubts started coming up into, into your hearts. And then your willful thinkings, false hopes, deluded you. Oh, Allah is merciful. Allah will forgive. Hatta jamrullah. Until the final command of Allah came. Vagharrakum billahi al-gharoor. And definitely that ark deceit, Satan, he misguided you in the name of Allah and His mercy. فَالْيَوْبَ لَا يُخَذُ مِنْكُمْ فِدْيَةٌ So today, no ransom will be accepted from you. وَلَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفِرُوا Nor from the unbelievers. In that world, you were with us, with the believing people. Because you were also taken to be Muslims. Here you are with the kuffar. فَالْيَوْمَ لَا يُخَذُ مِنْكُمْ فِدْيَةٌ وَلَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Now you are one category. You and the kuffar. مَا وَاكُمُ النَّارِ For all of you, the permanent abode is fire. هِيَا مَوْلَاكُمْ She is your patron now. 
bow down. Whatever you have to say, say to the sapphire. Jo duk suk karna ho, isi se karo. Nobody else to listen to your moans and groans and lamenting. Rabes al Masir, and it's a very bad and evil destination. Now, in these ayat, a very big question marks comes to us. There's a very beautiful couplet in Persian. Jane jumla ilm ha i nastubas. I nasto i. Jane jumla ilm ha i nasto i. Tabedani man kiam dariyome di. The essence of all knowledge is this only that you should be able to know where will you stand on the day of the judgment. If you read books and tafasir and al-ahadis and fiqh, this, but you are not worried where you are. Where will you be placed on the day of the judgment? About which even Muhammad says, Rain Adri, Ma you follow me, wala bekum, I don't know what will be done to me or to you. But we feel safe. Our salvation vouch saves. For to us. All these threats are for the kuffar, not for us. We are Muslims. If we are Muslims, we are Mormons. When we are Mormons, Jannah is going to be our abode. No, no question. But we must understand where do we stand. And then now a question. Alam yaani lil ladheena amanu an taqsha'a qulubuhum li zikri Allahi wa ma nadala min al-haq. Has the time not come up till now for those who, prof who profess to believe that their hearts should humble for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the truth that has been revealed. They should not be like those who were given the book before them. This is the reference of Yahud. I told you in the beginning. No address to Yahud, but a reference. Fatala alayhimul abad. Then their period became lengthened or prolonged. Fakasat kulubuhum. When their hearts hardened. Fakasiru minhum fasikun. And most of them are transgressors. This hardening of the hearts about fish in Surat in Baqarah we find. Summa qasat qulubukum fahiyya kal hijarat ya wa shadda qaswa. And then your hearts hardened. And now they have become as hard as stones, rather harder than the stones. This is the condition of the hearts of human beings when they are hardened. So, if you are alarmed, yes, this is time I, I mend my ways. This is the time I repent. This is the time I should turn sincerely to Allah and His Deen. Then, the ray of hope. Elamu, let this be known to you. Anna Allah yuhyil ardabada mautiha. That Allah revives the land, earth, after its death. So if your hearts have died, Allah can revive your hearts also. If you feel their, your hearts are barren regarding the crop of Iman, no, Allah can give you the crop. So don't be despaired, don't be disappointed. Because if you are despaired and disappointed, then there is no possibility of mending and rectifying your ways. For that you need the courage and hope. So see, Allah revives the land, that land, after its death, it will revive your hearts also. We have made clear our revelations to you so that 
you can understand and you ponder over it. But you have to plow, plow the land. The land is barren, you need two things, plow, sow the seed, wait for the rain. So, if your hearts are dead, if your hearts are barren, now you have to plow it. And what is the plowing of this land of heart? إِنَّ الْمُصَّدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَّدِّقَاتِ وَأَقْرَضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا Verily those who gave, give arms for the pleasure of Allah, men and women, and those who give loan to their Lord, goodly loan, يُضَافُ لَهُمْ وَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ It will be kept doubled for them. And there will be a very generous reward also, respectable reward also. This is the plowing of the, this land of heart. Get out from it, the love for wealth. The main disease is the love of this world. And the biggest manifestation of the love of this world is the love of wealth. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Now after this, when the impurities from this earth of your heart has been removed by plowing, now if you sow the seeds of Iman, and there we should read the understood words, Madazalik, not mentioned, Mahzuf, understood. If clearing your heart of the Love for wealth. After clearing your heart of the wealth, love of wealth, then you sow the seed of Iman. And now you will have the full harvest. Now they can go rise to the level of Siddiqeen. This is the highest level. Next to Ambiya. أُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالسِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ Now you can rise to Siddiqeen, وَالشُّهَدَاء You can be the witnesses of Allah on this earth. Living witnesses. Shaheed is not only the one who has given his life for the cause of Allah. A living Shaheed is the witness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you here among the Christians, Jehovah's witnesses? This is the correct word, witnesses. Whosoever practices the deen of Allah is by his very practice a witness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lahum ajruhum wa nuruhum. For them there will be their reward and the light. They will get the light which will be, which will show you the path on the, that day. And you will be able to cross that as-sirat. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا As for those who reject and belie our revelations, أُولَائِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمُ They are the people of the fire, dwellers of the fire. أَيْلَمُوا Now in a few ayat, this, now the crux of the matter is this world or that world? Which do you want really? مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْسَ الْآخِرَةِ نَجِدْ لَهُ فِي حَرْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْسَ الدُّنْيَا نُوتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيب Crucial question is you are after this world or that world? If you are after this world, that world, hereafter you have to use this world to earn that hereafter. But if this becomes an end in itself then you are doomed. اَلَمُوا أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهْمٌ وَسِيلَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاسُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Let it be known to you that the life of this world is nothing but a play, an amusement, an adornment, a boasting among yourselves. And a rivalry in abundance of riches and children. 
علم و نمل حیات و دنیا لائب و لہب و زینت و تفاخر بین کم و تکاثر الفلم والے والا اولاد دیز آر دی فائیو اسٹیجز آف ہیومن لائف ارلی چائلڈ ہڈ لائف از نتھنگ بٹ پلے انوسینٹ پلے وین یو آر ان دی ٹین ایجر اسٹیج ناؤ دیر از ناٹ اونلی پلے انوسینٹ پلے amusement and sensual gratification that come and also adornment i must have very good dress my hair very beautifully cut i should have the the clothings of the, the fashion of that time tafakhurum bainakum and then at a stage when you are nearing 30 now boasting i have more wealth i have more power i have a better car and finally you and what you are past the age of 40 then nothing except more and more wealth and more and more children this thing children this has stopped now in this world but before you know in that time because they were the source of strength the person who had more sons he was more strong more respectable but you know now this alhaqum at-takasur is only for riches 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 kama sare ghaisin the similitude is that of rain aaj abal kufara na baat ho rain and the resulting vegetation that pleases the husbandman فتراہ سما یہی جو فتراہ مسفر سما یقون ہو تاما اینڈ دین اٹ کرمبلس ٹو سی اٹ ٹرننگ یلو دین اٹ بیکم شیف فار اور اسٹرا دس از یو نو اے لائف سائیکل دی لینڈ واز لائنگ ڈیڈ رین فیل ناؤ دیر از ویجیٹیشن مے بی گراس اور سم کراپ بٹ دین آفٹر سم ٹائم دس بیکمز یلو and then you know it becomes chef or stars and nothing else so this is a few months and human life cycle is the same a new child is born then he grows up he reaches his maturity strong then you know the decline then gray hair then dead and buried in the grave This is a cycle of 30, 40, 60, 70 years, and this is a few months. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ But in the hereafter, one of the two ends are essential. Either عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ A very severe chastisement wa maghfiratun min allah wa rizwan and the other forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure now choose where you want to go if you have decided that you desire this world then this severe punishment in the hereafter if you decide here that you want the other world and allah then there will be forgiveness and the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala wa mal hayatu dunya illa mataul ghurur and this life of this world is nothing but a comfort of illusion when it obstructs your vision of the akhirah this dunya if it obstructs your vision of akhirah then it is ghurur it is dhoka it's fareeb it's dajjal it's dajjal this dunya is dajjal actually the intensity of this dunya will increase and increase and increase reaching that level of dajjal but our ghurur this is illusion but if you believe in akhira you aim at akhira you use this to earn akhira you saw here to reap in the akhira then this world this life is very important very precious each minute in each second of it again a question mark
Which way do you want to go? If you want to go towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so make his sabiku ila maqfaratun min rabbiku. Compete with one another. Race with one another, another, to get the forgiveness of your Lord and to get the garden, the breadth of which is like the breadth and vastness of the heaven and the earth. It has been prepared for those who believe in Allah and His messengers. It is the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will grant it to whomsoever He will like. And definitely, Allah has infinite bounty, immense bounty. So this is the, the path is fixed now. But on this path, there might be tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to go to, to the real path of Muhammad and his, his companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, razi Allah ta'ala. They had the test. At every step. Harder and harder, severer and severer tests coming one after the other. But to be able to go through them, you have to keep one thing in view. And that is the necessary corollary of faith in Allah. What is it? مَا سَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ النَّبْرَاهِ Whatever affliction comes to you, either on a larger scale in the land, there are floods or something else of that sort, hurricane, but lafi and fusikum, or in your own, you are you become sick, you meet an accident or whatsoever. Illa fi kitab, all these things are already written in a book, min qabli and nabraha, before we produce them and bring it forth. In Nazalik Allah Yasir. This is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the foreknowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the predestination for knowledge. Allah knows what will happen to you. And whatsoever will happen to you will be by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we read in Surah Al Tawbah, for Lay you see Bana Illa Makatab Allah Hulanahua Maulana. Nothing can come on us except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us already, and he is our Mawla. Whatever comes from him, well, welcome. Whatever comes from him, it's welcome for me. So that you should not grieve for that which you lose, and not rejoice on what Allah gives you. If you have lost something, this is also a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you are patient, you endure it, and whatever Allah gives you, is again a test. Whether you are thankful, and you use it properly, according to the divine law, and to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both ways is equal. So don't be grieved on what you have lost. Be patient. Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. All praise be to Allah in all the conditions. Whatever has come to me from Allah, it's okay. I accept it, I welcome it. If He has given something to you, okay. Thank Him. Use it in the best way, for your own benefit of the hereafter. And for the benefit of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallah wala yuhibbu kulla muqtalin fakhoor. And Allah does not at all like those who are arrogant and who get over delighted by these worldly things. You've got something and you feel over delighted. Allah doesn't like this. Allah dina yabkhaloon wa yamurun maasab al bukhl. Such are the people who are niggardly, covetous, 
They don't want to spend for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know the honor and respect in this world is for the wealthy, for the rich. So keep the wealth with you so that your honor and respect, you know, that is intact. وَيَعْمُرُونَ عَسَ بِالْمُخْلِ And they advise and suggest other, others also to be niggardly. Oh, you should be mindful of your future. What are you doing? You are spending everything for the deen of Allah. What will happen tomorrow? Maybe there is some emergency comes to you. What will you do? Your own sons and daughters? You don't think about their education, their marriages, etc., etc. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ And whosoever turns away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-sufficient. Ghani, he doesn't need anything from anybody. If he wants a loan from you, it's only to see how faithful you are. He doesn't actually need it. And he is Hamid, the praiseworthy. Now comes the real axis of this surah. And in a way, the real axis, umud, of the whole of Quran. This insight into the deen which is lacking today. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Verily we sent our messengers with clear signs and proofs and clear teachings. Bayyanat, something which is self-evident, doesn't need any other proof. So the miracles were also bayyanat, and the basic teachings of all the scriptures, all the books of Allah are also bayyanat. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ And we sent with them, sent down the book, the law, and the balance. Symbol of justice. What for? Most important part of this ayah. لَيَكُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ So that the people should abide by justice. Not they should read and get sawab, and they should listen to the Qari sahab in Taravi and get sawab. Is that all the purpose for which Quran was sent? Or you can read it very beautifully, and there are contests of Tarat, Husne Qarat. Was this the purpose for which Quran was sent? Or you write down with golden wires. Is what is the purpose of Quran? Beautiful calligraphy. What is the purpose of sending down Quran? What is it? Now see, the purpose of the advent of the messengers, the purpose of the sending down of the books. Purpose, purpose. It's not an exercise in futility. Alas, no action is purposeless. So all this, why? Sending messengers, sending down books, giving law, and the balance. What for? So that justice should be established and people should abide by justice. Now you know where there is injustice. There are two classes, the exploiters and the exploited. The oppressors and the oppressed. The downtrodden and the haughty. Will these exploiters or oppressors or the haughty ever like that the system of justice be established? Will they be ready to lose their all the, whatever they have in this wrong system, privileges. No. They are bound to resist. There will be some whose arwah and kuloob are salim and safe. They will listen to your call and come to you. But not most of them. Most of the exploiters, oppressors, they will resist 
They are bound to register. They will say, gird up your loins, come on. Stand up to protect your interests and your privileges. So there is going down, there will definitely going to be a conflict. And for that, Wanzalnal Hadid, we have sent down iron. Trihe Basun Shadid in this iron is the capability of fighting, battle, weaponry, the sword and spears. There are other benefits for people also. Utensils or something or articles of use you can make. But actually this is, uh, there is a view that iron and its compounds, they don't belong to this earth originally. They have come from the space. As meteorites, Anzalna al-Hadid, we have sent down Hadid. If that theory is correct, then this word would shine, you know, like anything. The Quran used this word for hadith, anzal al-hadith. We sent down hadith. If this is true, I am not very sure. But I have heard this, that this view is there, that this iron and its compounds, they are not from this earth, they are from the space. As many rights, they have come. So now this is anzal al-hadith, and we have sent down iron, fi hibasun shadid in which there is a very powerful cap capability of fighting and going to battle. وَلَيْ عَلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ وَرُسُلَهُ بِالْغَيْبِ And so that Allah wants to know, wants to see who are those faithful servants of His who take this iron in hand and crush the heads of those who resist the establishment of the system of justice. And the system of justice is Islam. In the Deen, in the Lail Islam, the Al Haq, the total injustice, is Allah. Al Adl. He is the justice. Al Adl is one of the names. Only He can give you the just political, socio economic order. He is neither male nor female. So He can look to the interests of both males and females. A male cannot imagine the feelings of a female. A female cannot have, you know, the understanding of the feelings of the male. Capital would look for its own benefits. Labor, it will strive for its own benefits. Rulers will wish to have more and more and more and more authority. And the people should want to have more and more and more and more freedom. We want to go on the streets naked. Who are you to stop us? Freedom. We want homosexuality. We are gays. Who are you to criticize? But the balance of justice between all these extremes, that is the deen al-haq. To establish the deen of haq those who are faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have to be ready to come to the battlefield with the iron in their hand to crush the heads of those who resist. They don't want to let the deed of Allah established. Inna Allah qawiyun aziz. Verily Allah is Himself very powerful. He could do it in no time. But then how would these for those who say we are believers, how will they be tested? This is only for your testing. Otherwise in no time, kun fa yakun, one command from him is sufficient. This whole system of falsehood will vanish like anything. And the system of justice will be established. Al-Qawi, Al-Aziz, in Allah Qawi, Al-Aziz, he is powerful, he has all the authority, he can do it in no time, but... It's a test for you. Who are those faithful servants of Allah who devote their lives, ready to spend their lives and all belongings to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
to establish the system of justice which he gave to humanity through his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us the courage to join this group, to be one of them, to make a resolve that we have to live for this and die for this. We have read 25 ayat of Surah Al-Hadid. First six ayat refer to the person and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the highest academic level, then two demands, Aminu and Fiqhu. Then, why do you not have faith? A rebuke. If you feel, actually, you don't have the real faith, turn to Quran. Second rebuke, why don't you spend for the cause of Allah? And in that, if the conditions are bad, there is no hope for the establishment of the deen of Allah. Still you spend for the deen of Allah, your energies, your life, your time, and your belongings. You will have greater regard than those who will be doing it after the attainment of victory. Then, what is the objective of it? And that is to establish the system of justice on earth, given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that, a stage might come when you have to go to the battlefield. But that is the last stage. For that, first of all, there should be some propagation of the ideology. Then who, whosoever accept it, organize them, train them. And when this process reaches a certain level, then only you can change the system. But the final point has been mentioned. The same thing as we read in Surah to Shura. I have been sent to establish justice among you. I am not a soothsayer or a sermon sayer or a poet or a storyteller. Nothing of the sort. I have been sent to establish justice. So this is the essence. Now there is a mistake also. When you are told that this life is nothing, real life is of Akhra, of the hereafter, then sometimes there is a tendency for what we call ascetism, Rahbaniyat, leave this world. Why marrying? Why having family life? Why bothering for all these things? Go to some caves or somewhere else, solitary places. Just remember your Lord have tried to have a communion with Him. But this is wrong. Islam says you don't love this world. But you have to change this world. Live here. Change it. You have to be an activist. Not a passive rahib. An ascetic. Passive ascetic. Sitting aside, sitting aside from the world. He doesn't care whether there are injustices being done over here, oppressions are being done over here, though he doesn't care, he is there. In his monastery or something else, sitting over there. No, 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 this is not Islam. So this actually was a mistake committed by the followers of one of the Ulul Azma min al-Rusul, and that was Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wasalam. People who came to believe in him, they twisted their religion towards Rahbaniyat, ascetism. So this mistake is pointed out here in the remaining four ayat of this surah. And for that purpose, Allah starts with Nuh. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلَّا نُوحًا وَإِبْرَاهِيمًا And with, and verily we sent Nuh and Ibrahim. وَجَعَلْنَا فِي زُرِّيَتِهِمَ النُّبُوَةَ وَالْكِتَابِ And we placed our, our prophethood and the book in the progeny of Nuh and Ibrahim. فَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَصِدْ Out of the progeny of the two, there are who are tightly guided, but most of them are transgressors. Now, then we meet our messengers to follow in their footsteps, and 
وی میڈ عیسا سن آف مریم ٹو فالو و جالنا فی قلوب اللذین تباؤہ رافتا و رحمہ و آتیناہ الانجیل and we gave عیسا انجیل the gospel and we placed in the hearts of those who followed him tenderness and mercy and compassion this was a special condition you know of the khawarigin of hazrat masih alayhi salatu wassalam wa rahbaniyata nibtadauha but monasticism and ascetism was something which they invented ma katabnaha alayhim we have not made it compulsory on them this was their decision this was the wrong turn they took kutuk illa tizar izwan illah we had only made it compulsory for them to seek the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then when we, they adopted ascetism fama rauha haqqari ayatiha then they could not observe it with the due observance fa'atana allazina amanu minhum ajrahum So we gave to those of among them who had real faith and belief and who came to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that can also be meant over here to them we gave their reward wa kasirun minhu fasiqun but most of them are also transgressors so this is to, to point out this wrong term don't love this world but live in it try to fashion it on the right path take it to the justice system of justice and establish the deen of allah over here this is the test of your faith and your iman in allah subhanahu wa taala ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullaha wa amanu bi rasulihi yutikum kiflan min rahmatihi oh you who profess to believe believe in allah have fear of allah and believe in his messenger what does it mean the real conviction that the model for us is the person of muhammad we have to follow him he was not an ascetic he did not start a monastic type of system no he fought for the cause of allah he was an activist he challenged falsehood he took his men to the battlefield led them to the battlefield so you have to follow him see how during the makki period he propagated his ideas then those who accepted iman organized them trained them with the permanent order the no retaliation whatever persecution comes to you verbal or physical you don't you have to take it patiently without any retaliation but then when he thought he has now enough strength with him he challenged the falsehood the system the ascendancy of quraish he fought them and then he established the deen of allah in the arabian peninsula so this is the model don't follow any other model you have not to follow the model of jesus no model for you is muhammad laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasana jesus had his own methodology but you have to follow muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are the ummah of muhammad so here you know ittaqullaha wa aminu bi rasulihi emphasis on iman on the messenger ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ittaqullaha wa aminu bi rasulihi yutikum kiflan min rahmatihi allah will give you two fold from his mercy wa najal lakum wa yaj'al lakum nuran tamshuna bihi and then he will give you the light with which you will be able to walk to walk in this world also you need a light guidance and to cross that bridge of asirat on the day of judgment you will be needing a light allah will give you wa yaghfir lakum whatever shortcomings allah will forgive them wallahu ghafurur rahim verily allah is forgiving merciful li allah ya'lam ahlul kitab alla yaqdiruna ala shay'in min fadlillah so that the people of the book should not think that they have now no access over the bounty of allah they have the access they can even now believe in muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam come amenu bi rasulihi 
you believe in Musa, you believe in Ibrahim, and so on and so forth. Come and believe in Muhammad also. So all the fuzzel, you know, the gates of fuzzle, you know, will, they will be opened. As we read in Surah Bani Israel, Asara Bukum Yarhamakum, Bain Uttum Rudna. Your Lord is ready to have mercy upon you even now. Go you under the shelter of the messengerhood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The gates are open. The Allah yakuna ahul kitab. Allah yakdiruna ala shayin min fadlillah. Wa anna fadla bi yadillah yutiya man yasha. The bounty is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's his prerogative. To whom he wants, he grants it. Wallahu zul fadl azim. And definitely Allah is of infinite bounty.